Hey everyone, welcome to Super Average People. On today's episode, we meet May. May is a 24-year-old woman from Toowoomba and she she's, I guess, mainly doing her full circle farm thing, which is, you know, diverting food waste from landfill and then growing food from that compost. I just love her, her audacity to be like, you know what, I don't know anything. I'm just going to go out and I'm just going to do this because I see a massive problem. And I don't care that I don't know anything. I'm just going to do it and learn along the way. And because I just can't sit around I just can't sit around and see nothing happening. I mean, I wanted to talk to May because, I mean, there's just something about farming and women and nature and, oh, just all of that that really gets me going. I mean, there's so many things about May. Like, first of all, like, she's young. Like, how did someone so young already, like, realise that our current culture isn't really benefiting anyone? And, how, like, how does she know so soon that, not nah, not into that, let's create something else? Um, just that she's... She's never farmed before. She doesn't really know anyone that's ever farmed before, but she's still like, hey, I'm going to do this. And then also just how she's she's really in that root cause area, trying to heal things, and which is a long-term game. And as we know, we don't really have a, a long time, but she's not buying into that story. And she knows to make any change, we have to really just start, just really start right down deep because there are no quick fixes for our problems and to have that patience and that drive and that belief I need to know where like where does she get this all from so that maybe we can help foster that in all of us because I mean I imagine if we all just had that just that passion and hope that May has I think it would be a pretty cool world <laughs> My name's May, um, and I, yeah, I, I, I love growing things. It's what gets me up in the morning. It's what gets me to sleep at night. I can't imagine a life without it now, and I, I'm sort of almost sad that I discovered it this late in my life because, you know, I'm so old. But, um, but yeah, as a kid, I was very surrounded by nature. I was lucky to grow up in the bush, but through my teenage years when I moved into town, I sort of lost that connection a little bit. I'm just I just feel really lucky to have re-found the connection to living natural things through growing plants. It's become a big part of my identity. Yeah, well, I went to an all-girls private school, which was quite interesting. It did teach me a lot about um, being a woman and, you know, the, the beautiful friendships that you can have with other women. You know, someone like me who didn't necessarily come from a, a really privileged background financially. Um, my mum worked very hard to send me to that school. I was very much, you know, it, 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 it created a bit of a, a class shock at times. And I, I was very, I became very aware of class and even gender and, and how, you know, starting out in life um, as a woman or as someone who's not extremely wealthy can put you back a little. They taught me a lot about, about money and and how I how I sort of see it, what my values are around money, very much kind of came from that environment, which might sound a bit strange, but being around that kind of wealth um, and seeing that that people still had to deal with the same problems that everyone else has to deal with, um, like getting sick or you know um, not having connection with other human beings. You know, it doesn't matter how much money you have, you can't actually buy some of those really truly meaningful human experiences. The reason I didn't get really caught up in that kind of elitist um, snobbery, for lack of a better word, was my family kept me very grounded. And throughout all that, I was reminded that, you know, um, just because your friend has those fancy shoes doesn't mean you have to have them. And, you know, you, you can you can be your own person within that and, and be proud of that. And you have to make your own opinions too. And I, I've come from a very left-wing family, um, which is, you know, to me, I, I mean, my, my values still sit with that, but I've, I've had times where I've really had to question, why do I actually believe this? Is it just because I've been surrounded by these ideas my whole life? You know, there were times where I purposely um, sought out connection with people that have vastly different views because I almost wanted to test, you know, that's the only opportunity you really have to actually 
think about why when people go, but why do you believe that? And often when you're surrounded by people that agree with you, you're not actually stretched in that way. I remember like my mum's always been a mad gardener and she had, we, we were living together when I was at uni just out of school and she had this little, little um, rectangular raised bed and it was looking really kind of sad. And I, I must've just been bored enough to think I'm gonna plant some stuff in there. So he took me to Bunnings and had a little spree. And I think honestly, what led me to it initially was a, the creative outlet because I have a lot of creative energy. It kind of just fell into place that that was like where I put it that day and it felt really good. And it was, and I think gardening and farming can be so creative. Um, it, you know, people don't really probably associate it with that, but I very much think it's, it's like, it's like making a piece of art that continues to change and develop and and that's the cool part it's like yeah it comes back to that relationship it feels like a relationship with your plants and your farm and your um you know all the thinking that you put into it and all the the effort and conscious kind of presence even that you have and share with those plants you know there's something so powerful about that and I think I just got seriously hooked on on that feeling more than even necessarily having something to eat but it was so interesting then to yeah to watch it develop I think like I sort of planted it and went oh yeah that's cool I'm done with that now but I'd walk past it and go holy moly like and it still shocks me it's like the silliest thing that I'm still shocked when things grow but it really is like that you know you plan something you're like all right and I never try to build my hopes up too much I'm like look it's probably gonna die and then when it does grow you're like yes you know so and that's that feeling has not changed so my business here in Toowoomba is called uh, Full Circle Farm and the main idea is to form partnerships with cafes and restaurants where I collect their compostable waste weekly and then I use that as a resource on my farm to build soil and grow more food. I was trying to collect enough material to make a solid compost pile and I, and I realised then how much material was out there. And, and you know, I had a, a really good friend who I'm very close to still, who was very engaged in environmental issues and doing a lot of things. And so she taught me a lot about um, just general waste and how much um, ends up in these giant landfill sites that can so very much be used, you know, probably many times over. And I just honestly had not thought that deeply about it. Tried to, hey, you should save your scraps for me because they're awesome. And when they break down, they make this incredibly rich, you know, material that, that I can use on my, on my, you know, on my plants. And, and I just was so excited to realize this. And, and just having that really simple loop of food waste, composted down, grow food, eat food food waste like it, it just made sense it came through trying to have enough compost to to have good soil to grow my plants and then I, I couldn't help but realize that there was that intrinsic connection with organic matter and growing plants and organic matter is what you find in lots of bins you know like we throw out a lot of organic matter and and that was just yeah just a totally different way of looking at waste and and it became really valuable it's like we can be using this to fix another problem, which is soil depletion. You know, like it, it, we have all these problems and sometimes they can actually work together. And, and yeah, the whole problem around food waste, I mean, this is, this is really nutrient dense stuff. And our soils are microbial deserts right now, especially in Australia, we have so much soil depletion um, and our soil health is like worse than ever. And it just, it, it's like, <laughs> you know, it just makes sense. So when it goes to landfill, obviously, it's not breaking down in the same way that it does within a composting system. And it's producing just a whole bunch of methane and other gases that even more so contributes and, and impacts negatively on our planet. So it's like, even the way we're dealing with it is, is creating more issues itself. It was, it was genuinely like, I am going to be so frustrated and, and get into a really negative space if I don't do something, I, I, yeah, I just, I just had to try. <laughs> I had to try and I'm still trying and I'm still learning and I, and I can, you know, there's so much more I want to do within this full circle farm model. It's really just beginning. Um, and again, I didn't want to just sit there telling people what they should be doing when I wasn't even modeling any kind of behavior like that. Um, I feel like now I've def I definitely have more purpose than I ever have. I can see it being an endless journey of learning. I think that's what excites me so much because I've always sort of gone through phases of different things and got really hooked on something for a while and then kind of worn it out. And I was worried that would happen with farming. I was really worried. It baffles me how excited I am <laughs> to do it. There's still just this like 
really quite still unfamiliar drive in me to do it that is different from just being like really obsessed with something. It's it's something different. It's a little foreign to me still, and I'm kind of still figuring it out. Yeah, it's but. exciting to me now to think of, you know, that it is just a matter of time, of learning over time. And I meet older farmers that just know so much. And it's just like information's just oozing out of them. And it's and and it's clearly because they've just been doing it for that long. You know, you can't read every book and know everything. Yeah. That and, and I know nothing, you know, like I'm so aware of how little I know starting out, but I've always liked mastering things very quickly. You know, it's like, okay, I'm just gonna learn all about it, everything I possibly can. And I even did that with this. I did so much research, talked to so many people. And yeah, that definitely like, you know, jump started the the learning journey a bit, but I, the things I really remember are when I've done them myself and actually waited six months to see if that corn grew well from that particular soil type or whatever. You know, like it is a long game, but that's the stuff you really hang on to. And I think it's also because you're more connected to it yes. when our world is so much based on that kind of consuming things and having things really quickly. Um, it's been a real test and I think it's it's definitely changed my um, that's kind of almost trickled into other aspects of my life, that being able to wait and knowing that sometimes it's worth it, you know. Whatever way that can fit into your life um, to find some point of connection with nature, I think it, it, it almost just organically happens after that, that you will start to think a little bit differently. And yeah, stuff. and you do have to sit with that discomfort of, you can't actually fix it. Like, like no one person can fix it. Um, but the cool thing about the planet as well is that it's so good at regenerating itself. Even after all the crap that we've done, it's finding ways to regenerate itself. Okay. So our local governments can be doing so much more. And I honestly, when I started collecting waste, I was sitting around whinging all the time about how we didn't have an organics waste stream and they weren't doing anything and farmers could be using this compost and blah, blah, blah. And I did just get to a point where I was like, oh my God, stop whinging and just do something. But it is frustrating when, you know, you contact council and they say, yeah, within 10 years or within the next 20 years, you're like, I'm going to be 40. It, it can be frustrating when you hear about all these exciting advances in technology and how that's going to help the planet regenerate itself. And But then they say it's, you know, 30 years away. And that's where it's like, we don't actually have that time. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm getting emotional. <laughs> Just keep doing this teeny tiny thing. It doesn't matter how teeny tiny it is because um, it means something to me and it means that I'm not sitting around not doing anything about it. It's only very recent history where our, our kind of food system has changed really dramatically. Um, before industrialised agriculture came along, a lot of people had gardens and were very connected to their farmers and there were a lot more, I mean, I wasn't alive, but I'm going off you know, history here. There were a lot more small scale farms supplying their local communities, which is sort of what I hope we return to. But yeah, industrialised agriculture basically just came along, I think it was like after the Second World War and it just presented itself as this really great way to produce like food en masse, you know, and this is after food shortages and things like that. So they were looking for ways to just maximise production, pump food out as quickly as possible. The biggest kind of problems from it have been um, overuse of chemical sprays and blanket spraying, you know, with like giant helicopters just spraying the whole field. And obviously, you know, they're targeting one kind of pest or one kind of fungal problem, but they end up killing so much other stuff. And then obviously the remnants killing from things that come and eat those bugs. So we've continued to do it for so long that the damage is huge. It's often in monoculture, so just a giant field of the same thing. Um, and anyone who's sort of interested in permaculture will know that it's a, it's very much kind of fighting against that because it, it encourages diversity and um, creating kind of uh, really resilient systems that almost kind of look after themselves. There's just so much clever stuff that you can do. And yes, industrialised agriculture is, is quite simple, it's easy, it's efficient. But the other huge problem is that once they have all this food, they have to transport it over huge distances. And to me, that is just such an unnecessary use of resources where you can have smaller farms like mine driving 10 minutes to deliver food to a cafe that people eat that day. You know, like it, it just makes so much more sense. The biggest thing is obviously this is how most people are eating. This is like, this food is what feeds the masses. It feeds most of the world. And if you just shut that off and tried to make it organic, you probably wouldn't have the same yields at first. The other thing about more sustainable and regenerative farming is that <clears throat> um, you're working, you're looking long-term. So you're not just focusing on, on getting the most out of the land 
and then you know depleting it to the point where you have to just move on to somewhere else. It's about looking down the track and actually actually improving your soil as the time goes on. So it's kind of a long game, but even for me, like I'm trying to build topsoil at the farm at the moment. I've got 10 centimetres and I'm hoping, you know, each year that will get more and more just from all the organic matter that I'm putting into it. So you're not going to have like perfect soil straight away and you're not going to have perfect yield straight away. It also, it's so much more complicated in the sense that for them to make money, they do have to produce so much more if they're signed up with places like Coles and Woolies and they're getting so underpaid. They have to produce that much just to get by. Whereas the small, small scale farming model um, allows people to avoid signing up for those awful contracts and, you know, connecting directly with the consumer. And that's where, you know, I can grow a small amount and still have being from that. There's been so, a lot of kind of debate around whether organic farming can feed the world, you know. And when I say organic farming, I don't necessarily mean all, like certified organic, just not um, destroying the planet basically like just working with the planet with nature rather than against it like we have evidence that it can very much feed the world it would be a really drastic change and yes it would mean things would be expensive for a while and that's hard to me if more and more people do support organic farmers or small-scale growers um, it will ultimately like the market will have to respond to the consumer in some way just as we're already seeing in big chain supermarkets, I've noticed there are more varieties of things now. There are more heirlooms coming in. There are, you know, there's the odd bunch, which I won't get into that because um, <laughs> they're beautiful and they should be first grade. We and do have power as consumers and we have to harness that and realize that power. And, and when what we decide to buy and what we decide not to buy, people are listening to that. No matter we are so very much intrinsically connected to our natural world just because we are a part of it, just like plants or bees or whatever but we have become so disconnected from that. And it really does come down to how we see ourselves and how we relate to nature and how we see ourselves as part of nature, I think. And I know that's so simple, but it's like, yeah, if, if more and more of us realise that we aren't this dominant species, I mean, it looks like it from the outside perspective. Yeah. You know, bees are so important. Like, the, like you, every animal, every living thing is just as important as everything else. And we are no different from that. We're definitely not more important. I often think about my own journey and the fact that I, you know, I haven't really, I've only since farming become really in tune with actually what's going on as well from observing things. You know, I don't see as many bees anymore on my farm and that's in, a, in like a really small space of time. So when you start seeing this stuff, um, it's like you can't not do something about it because you're so in it. If we were more conscious of you know, connecting with our natural world more. And it's a shame that we actually have to like purposely go and be in nature. <laughs> like that is a weird thing when you think about it. But if that's what we have to do to have that, it definitely felt like it was meant to happen. And I got that energy from, from a lot of people, like just people I'd never met, people in the community. There was this incredible sense of community that I'd never really felt even here where I've lived my whole life. I think was... people had been looking for something like that as well. Like people had been thinking about it. It's just like, hey, now it's here and, and we can get behind this. So just even the cafes and places that wanted to give me their coffee and food waste, you know, they were, they were excited to have an avenue like that. There was definitely an energy of, ex of excitement that I felt from that response because it's, it's scary when you're do, doing something on your own as well. As, and there were so many times where I'd be like, no one's even going to get this, which was silly because people got it and people get it. And um, that definitely, yeah, reinforced it all and made me think, no, there's definitely something happening here and it's worth continuing this. And, and honestly, when I first started, I didn't really know what it would look like exactly, but going off how people responded, um, definitely fell into place. Oh, look, it sounds so corny, but I feel like mama nature's got my back to a point, you know, like I, I don't believe in any particular deity, but mother nature as a, as a concept, I suppose, would be the closest thing I, I could ever relate to in that way and I do feel connected to that force whatever it is it is a force it's so incredibly complex and it's so powerful and and you cannot help but feel something from that when you're in it a lot of the time um, even when you know on the hottest days when I'm standing out there and, and I think god like how powerful is this and that's hard sometimes where I'm like sweating and I don't want to be doing it but you know I, I have these moments where I have to sort of almost stop and just kind of like appreciate how intense and powerful nature is even when it's hard and it feels like it's pushing against what I'm trying to do which again is that humanistic way of looking at things we can't control these things yeah there are definitely times you know where I'll go out and everything's sitting up and it's overcast and I just think thanks you know like 
thanks for giving me giving the plants a break for the day. And I and, and I I can't help but think that that is um, that there's something there. I, I do feel more kind of aligned with yeah, quiet and um, uh, yeah, quiet and gentle kind of forms of activism. Just like having little chats with people and 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 selling my stuff and you know talking to people about just basic stuff of, about how I grow food, you know. You know, not only are they more connected to their food and the person who grows it, but it gets them thinking on that train of thought as well. I really thrive off community. And I like to think that if nothing else, I'll be able to bring some kind of positive contribution to my own community, wherever that is in the world at the time. And right now I, I'm, I'm loving, you know, being part of my local farmer's market. Sense of community that has brought me like farmers markets are so important you know you don't have conversations with people like you do at the farmers markets when you go to a supermarket you just don't own no space for that it's so it's so cold and no one's connecting and obviously the farmer isn't behind the counter you know like it's such a it's such a weird way to consume food when you think about it you know, there are just so many different ways to provide food to people and the more we start to look at those other ways the more they make sense and yeah i wish more people knew the other options that were there because we could be doing them right now i guess that's what i wish people knew i wish people knew more about the power of regenerative agriculture i would love if people lived in community more that we don't necessarily have to live in these isolated kind of ways cities there are so many people living on their own um, and, the, and there's this, you know, aging population and a lot of elderly people are living on their own. And that's also a cultural thing. Not, not every other culture is set up that way. And a lot of other cultures will have, you know, intergenerational living arrangements. And there's so much evidence that there is endless benefits for everyone in that. You know, when you look at how hard it is for young people to get land now and, and buy a house and build a house, it just makes so much sense to me that, especially if you're growing food and, and you know, wanting to live with other people that grow food. It just makes sense to get a block of land together, still probably have your own little spaces, but just just really encouraging that community. And you know, when families live together, how much less pressure is on mothers and, and just parents, you know, to look after their children. It's like, we live in these little bubbles and it's, you know, our little family, but we could all be helping each other and supporting each other too. And I think that would, also just solve a lot of problems. Um, we would use less resources that, that way. We would, yeah, be better off in terms of our mental health and well-being. Um, Being in the world right now is a confusing um, place and position to navigate. Probably more confusing than ever in some ways. I actually think it's a really exciting time to be alive in terms of things shifting really quickly. And when you're in it, which I feel I am now that I'm doing markets and connecting with consumers, it, I, I, I see the change in the food system really happening and not just talking about it next five, 10 years, I see it happening. It is extremely hopeful. Um, but in terms of the environment, I mean, it's, it's really hard to remain hopeful. The more you kind of inform yourself too, it's, it's almost a bit of a trap. It's, it's really important that we all know what's going on, but I'm sure others will understand that that kind of trap you get into of, of reading every little thing you can find about it and honestly getting pretty depressed. Um, but, uh, but it's like, it's good to understand what's going on. <clears throat> but I think we have to, I mean, we have to have hope because otherwise, what else will we do? Um, but I'm hopeful because social change has always happened from, from a few people or lots of people in different spaces. Um, thinking similar things and questioning things. And I know because I hear it all the time in different contexts, even just around town when I'm picking up bins, people are having dialogues that are very focused on um, what they can actually do. And, and that's awesome because I think it starts with, okay, so here's the problem, here are the problems. This is really shit, you know? Yeah. And people take that on first. And then it's like, the hope is in the fact that there are actually so many opportunities to do something on a really small individual level. Yeah, and I, I, I try not to um, let things overwhelm me because I mean, with what I do with collecting waste, I see so much food waste. And when I started, it honestly would get to me so much. Like I would go home and just feel 
uh, you know, like there's so much out there and I haven't collected it and I sort of really took it on and, and that became really unhelpful. Um, but then I started to shift my thinking and, and, and say things to myself like, you know what, it's actually, it's okay that, you, that you're only collecting this teeny tiny amount because I only have a teeny tiny car and that's okay because the power is in the collective force of lots of people doing that. And that's what you, I think you have to hang on to. For me, it's checking in with people that really believe in it too. Because sometimes I lose a little bit of belief in the whole thing, just day to day, you know, but then it's like, I know people that, I have a few people anyway, that will always be like, no, no, no this is important, keep doing this. For me, like, I just care about living quite simply. Yep. For me, that means kind of gently and quietly and, and not having much of an impact, um, unless it's a good kind. But yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm just keen to, I just feel so young and so um, new to what I'm doing that I have so much to learn and that's what really is exciting. And I know that um, as long as I keep doing that, I will be living curiously, which is also very important to me. Um, and then, I, yeah, I will be living in some kind of alignment with my, with my values. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe so that we can keep sharing these awesome stories.